Thank you for tuning in to ESPN Milwaukee's double coverage with David Rantisi and Denny Gallagher going over the Green Bay Packers and Philadelphia Eagles matchup for Week 11, uh, as Denny called it. It is the cheese curds versus the cheese steaks. Very creative there, Denny. Uh, but we're looking at this matchup with a 7-2 and Philadelphia Eagles team, first in the NFC East against a Green Bay Packers 6-3 and team who are currently second in the NFC North. This is going to be a hot matchup. Any initial thoughts uh, on your end? Well, it's going to be hotter than taking a cheesesteak off the grill at either Pat's or Geno's. But um, <laughs> some initial thoughts right off the bat is – uh, obviously, Philadelphia right now, a very sexy pick. They're obviously trending upwards, um, losing their quarterback and then getting Mark Sanchez to step up in place. That's obviously been a terrific story thus far. But, I mean, the Packers are also trending upwards right now as we speak as well. I mean, you have Aaron Rodgers coming off a career game against the Bears, but I know that's not saying much because it's the Bears. But, um Right now, the Packers are scoring an average of 41.5 points a game at home. That's pretty impressive, especially in the National Football League. Um, A few things to keep in mind when you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, it's going to be the play of LeSean McCoy and how he's able to go against a Packers rush defense, which is the worst in the NFL at the current moment. But also, at the same time, you have to look at the... Um, ascendance of Clay Matthews into the middle linebacker position last week, and it'll be interesting to, to look at that m- matchup, McCoy versus Matthews, as we go into this week matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I was actually going to hit on that as well, and uh, I was going to I was going to say I think this is a matchup to watch out for. Uh, Clay Matthews again is a, is a player who's obviously known for his edge rushing ability gets after the quarterback, and likes to sack the quarterback. Now that you push him inside, he's a guy who's going to have to, you know, learn to how to, you know, drop back into coverage at times, learn to assign uh, for the running back at times. So looking at LaShawn McCoy headed into this matchup for Week 11, he's a guy who hasn't had the start that everyone thought he would have because uh, of, of how he looked in 2013. He only has two rushing touchdowns on the season, but... When you look at the matchup the Green Bay Packers had with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2013, LaShawn McCoy ran all over him. You have to pop the tape back and you have to study that and you have to say, look, we're playing with some different players in different spots now. We have to figure out how we're going to attack LaShawn McCoy because if you're the Green Bay Packers, I don't necessarily think that you have to worry about Mark Sanchez. You have to, I think, worry more about LaShawn McCoy, Darren Sproles, that running game, and, and identifying that you're the worst run defense in the NFL right now. You have to identify that. You have to say, this is who we are, and this is our identity. How do we fix it? Because we have one of the better running backs in the NFL right now coming into our house, uh, and how do we stop him? So uh, I'm glad that you you, you did hit on that because I think Clay Matthews is going to be huge uh, at the inside linebacker position uh, for this week for the Green Bay Packers. Now here's what I want to ask you, David. Do you think we'll see the return of the NASCAR package? For those of you that maybe don't follow the day-to-day as well, that's the no-down lineman and um, rushing the five guys standing up that we saw against New Orleans and a little bit against Carolina. I know Capers has been throwing that in of late. Do you think we'll see that to help slow down the fast-paced Eagles this week? That's That's a great question. To me, I don't know if this is what... Uh, the NASCAR package is supposed to do in regards to the personnel out on the field. Um, when you're trying to defend uh, a defense that, or an offense that spreads you out, I think the NASCAR package is supposed to kind of have those faster guys out there a little bit leaner in order to kind of spread out a little bit and, and um, you know, I guess be more – I guess faster, you can say. But, you know, the NASCAR package, and there's the monster car package, bigger bodies, I think that's meant for more stopping the run, if I read that correctly. So uh, I'm not I'm not quite positive because LaShawn McCoy and Darren Sproles are those athletic, fast type of players who you want to be able to cover at both ends of the field. Um, but at the same time, when you talk about stopping the run, you want those big bodies in there. So I'm not quite sure if you're going to have that NASCAR package in there or used as much as they did in, in uh, New Orleans and Carolina. So uh, to answer your question, I'm probably going to say no. I think if you want to have those guys stopped, you're going to have you're going to need some bigger bodies. Even though LaShawn McCoy can get around the edge 
and, and he can burn you. And we've seen it before, and it's scary. But uh, right now, LaShawn McCoy, I think if you couple the fact that he hasn't been having the season uh, that LaShawn McCoy should be having, on top of that, you have Mark Sanchez in at quarterback. I'm not too worried right now as a Green Bay Packer fan uh, headed towards this game. Now, the quarterback always talks about in his postgame press conferences and on our Tuesdays with Aaron Scherr right here on 540 ESPN and ESPNWisconsin.com about taking advantage of the home cold weather games and how vital they've been to the seasons in the past. A very interesting thing to keep an eye out. These two teams this year are a combined 9-0 and at home, so with this game being at Lambeau this week, you have to give the edge to the Packers in a cold-weather environment. Um, these teams this year, obviously, let's just break it down for those of you that have not had a chance to check out the internet this week. Philadelphia coming in at 7-2, and um, averaging about 31 points a game. Packers coming in averaging about 30.8, so pretty similar there. Green Bay coming in at 6-3. and but the key thing is this game being at Lambeau Field for the Green Bay Packers right now. I mean, as you get later in, in the season, that home field advantage becomes bigger and bigger. And in a league this year that's really been so one week at a time, like the landscape changing week in and week out, I feel like that could be a huge asset for the Packers coming into this pretty big matchup with playoff implications. The Green Bay Packers at home are, uh, I don't know, not uh, just phenomenal. Yeah. One word to describe it is phenomenal. Are they the best? Did you not say 41.5 points? Is that what it was um, at home right now? They're averaging? Yeah. yeah. Who does that? Is, is, is that Rodgers and Jordy Nelson do that. That's what. And don't forget about Randall Cobb. That's true. That's true. Um, but, no, I, that's the thing. The reason why I'm not really scared of this game, scared of the Philadelphia Eagles, even though they are 7-2, and two, even though they have shown – uh, some resiliency and, and and being able to win games and being able to be on top of their division this late in the season so far, I'm not scared. Do you think anybody can come into Lambeau and really give the Packers a scare right now? Yeah. Are they that unbeatable? Yeah, no, no, they're not. They're not that unbeatable. And, and the game in a couple of weeks, the New England Patriots, that's going to be scary. That's going to have Tom Brady and company coming in, very underrated defense coming in to Lambeau Field. And uh, that's the game that Green Bay Packer fans should be scared of. That just goes to show the state of the league this week. There were so many people in like week six and early in like October and like late September that were saying that the Patriots were done, Tom Brady was finished, and now they have what many to be considered the most potent offense in the NFL. So it's just such a strange dynamic this year. Unlike many that that we've seen, like we don't have teams; we have individual week performances that are just true. Proving to be truly great storylines this year. Like one week, the Packers are in the considered the best team in the NFC by, by people around this office, and the next week they're out of the playoffs. It's just a crazy, crazy conversation this year, and I think it's fun for sports fans and media personalities alike. Uh, I think last week, and it might still be this week, the Packers. When you project them into the playoffs, they're not in the playoffs. They're the seventh seed. I haven't looked at it this week. Um, so I'd have to check up on that, but you know, with how successful the Packers have looked, even with with the six and three record, you know, so far it's still a successful season. Uh, they still wouldn't be in the playoffs. There's a lot of competitive teams in the NFC. The Lions are a team that are are surprising some with a seven and two record. They're headed into Arizona this week, and you know what? I haven't projected to win. I haven't projected to win. No Carson Palmer there for the Arizona Cardinals. He's out. For the season with a torn ACL. and So you don't believe in Drew Stanton down there in Arizona? I don't. I don't. I just think that they have too many weapons on offense down there to be, like, I feel like they could have very much a Mark Sanchez effect like like the Eagles had n- next week. I mean, when you're talking about Larry Fitzgerald, Michael Floyd, so many weapons that can burn you on the perimeter. I agree, but that that's the thing with, with Drew Stanton. You, he, can he get them the ball? Can he be a guy who can consistently get them the ball? I think ball? we've seen it in the past when he's had his opportunities that he's taken full advantage of them. Well, now now the test is here for yeah. Drew Stanton. He's, for the rest of the season, he's going to be the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals unless something happens to him. Um, but with that being said, and, and kind of backtracking a little bit to the to the Detroit Lions, um, you know they're a team who have been, I would say, slightly lucky. The last three games, they've been able to edge out their opponents – to get three additional wins, um, I don't know how 
much longer that luck is going to be there for them. And like I just said, I have them winning against the Cardinals this week, but I think after this week, you know, the Lions might start being the Lions and we might start seeing them on the decline. But then again, I might be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. That's why you love the NFL. So, <laughs> I mean, when you have the Cleveland Browns in playoff position right now, it's just such a great Not even playoff position. They're on top of their division. Yeah, yeah, they're on top, which, I mean, it's, it, it's going to be interesting down the stretch with all of our good karma brothers and sister stations going oh, yeah. on. A lot of playoff implications on our air- airways right now. So it will be interesting t- to check out. Without a doubt. So, uh Asking you this question before we head out, Denny. Yes. Who do you have winning, Green Bay Packers or the Philadelphia Eagles? And if you want, you can throw a score in there. I'm going to go Green Bay 35, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go Eagles 14. I just don't think that magic strikes strikes twice for a one Mark Sanchez. Um, I'm going to have to say the Packers score a lot of points this week because that's just what they've been able to do at home. So I might have to go high scoring just like you. So I'm going to say 38, Philadelphia 21. Just before we head out of here, um, if, if you want more Packers coverage, head to ESPNWisconsin.com. Wildy's always throwing great stuff up there. Um, keep an eye on the YouTube page for other great videos and stuff coming your way. And, yeah, thank you so much for listening today. And, David, last word? Uh, no, that you, you pretty much covered it, Denny. That's Denny Gallagher, David Rantisi with double coverage. I should say ESPN Milwaukee's double coverage. And that is all we have for you guys today. We're out.